Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. The final topic in Chapter 5, Levers. As always, you'll learn exactly the information you need to sit your final exam. And today you need to be able to identify and draw three classes of lever, to state examples of the three classes of lever in the human body, and to describe how levers help performance in different sporting situations. All movements that an athlete performs are produced by levers. A lever is a solid bar or lever arm that turns around an axis to create movement. In the human body, lever arms are bones and the force required to create movement is produced by muscles. Levers are comprised of three different components, the first of which is called the fulcrum or the fixed point or axis about which the lever can turn. Human levers typically use joints as their turning points, but fulcrums can also be found outside the body when rowing, vaulting, or when performing a routine on the horizontal bar. The second component is termed resistance, and this is the load or weight that a lever must work against as it moves. In human levers, resistance is applied by the person's weight or body mass, or by an external object such as a dumbbell, football, or javelin. The final component is effort, which can be defined as the force required to move the resistance. Effort is applied by the muscles as they contract, which pull on the bones, producing movement at joints. The way in which these components are arranged determines the characteristics of a given lever, and there are three classes of lever that you need to know. Let's start with a first class lever, where the fulcrum can always be found in the center, and effort and resistance forces are applied to opposite ends. Nodding your head is a great example of a first class lever in action. The joint that is formed as the spine meets the base of the cranium is the fulcrum for this one. The resistance force comes from the weight of the head and is directed downwards due to gravity, while the trapezius muscle pulls on the back of the skull, providing the effort force needed to oppose the resistance. In diving, this first class lever is used to tuck the head into the chest when performing a somersault. A second class lever starts with the fulcrum at one end, with the resistance force acting through the middle, and effort applied to the other end. The order of these components means that the effort needed to move the resistance is actually less than the resistance force itself. This is why you're capable of lifting more in a wheelbarrow than you could with your arms alone. Plantar flexion occurs as we stand on our tiptoes, and this is an example of a second class lever in action. The fulcrum is located at the joints between the toes and the ball of the foot, the weight of the body is the resistance, and the gastrocnemius muscle on the back of the leg provides the effort. During a long jump, this second class lever allows the athlete to move their entire body weight by plantar flexing at the ankle joint at takeoff. Finally, we have a third class lever, where the fulcrum and resistance sit at opposite ends of the lever arm and the effort is applied between these two components. Because of the distance between the fulcrum and the end of the lever arm, third class levers allow us to produce a large range of movement and generate speed when throwing, running or jumping. When performing a bicep curl, the elbow takes on the role of the fulcrum, the bicep produces the effort by pulling on the forearm, while the weight of the dumbbell, hand and arm provide a resistance to work against. Now it's your turn to identify the class of lever and locate the three components being used in each of these examples. You can sketch lever diagrams to help you if you like, and make sure you remember to add the force arrows. Rowing is an example of a first class lever in action, as the effort and resistance are applied to opposite ends of the oar, while the fulcrum sits between these forces. A forehand drive in tennis uses a third class lever. The fulcrum is the shoulder joint, effort comes from the pectoral and deltoid muscles, and resistance from the force applied by the ball. Now you've just covered everything you need to know on levers. You can find a link to the Cambridge Pass database down in the description, and I'll see you next time for the first topic in Chapter 6, Health and Wellbeing. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful, and I'll see you in the next one.